there we go okay so this one it says oh look it says find an equation is that the same kind of phrase find an equation write an equation, equation yes, it's please. the same thing so as soon as I see this phrase I automatically know I need to be using the same formula that we've been using now this one does give me coordinates doesn't it so I do know what the x1 and the y1 are and I could pick whichever one I want to use I just have to either use the 6 and the 1 or the 4 and the 3 I can't mix them up right so you have two points to choose from for x1 and y1 however am I given m M is your slope. Mm -hmm. And have, did they give me the slope? Did they tell me what the slope was? No. Nope. No. But can I find the slope using the information they did give me? Yeah, because you can take and use that y minus 2, y minus yes. 1 over x minus 2, x minus 1. Uh -huh. you know, memorize that one. Yes. And then you'll figure that out. So you'll have. So you basically one. have like a pre step yeah. before you can do the real step. Okay. So yes. What is y2? One, positive one. Uh, what is y1? Negative three. And then what is x2? Negative six. And then x1? Positive four. Positive four. So basically he called this one point two and he called this one point one. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong okay. with that just as long as this both of these guys are in the front and both of these guys are in the back. And the y's are on the top and the x's are in the bottom. So then that's going to turn to a plus. So what's one plus three? Four. Mm -hmm. And these are both negative, so I'm going to have a bigger negative. What number is that going to be? Ten. Negative, ten. Ten, negative 10. And then that can be reduced, and a calculator will tell me it's negative 2 fifths. Yeah. So now I know what the slope is. The slope is negative 2 fifths. Now you're going to have to pick an x1 and a y1. You cannot pick from one coordinate from here and one coordinate from there. You have to pick one whole point. Since they called this one point one, that's the x1 and the y1 I'm going to use. Okay? okay? If you had called that one point one, then this would be the x1 and the y1 you Who used. Who made that? You did. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> you did okay. without knowing that you okay. did. Because right. <laughs> okay. as soon as you started telling me this guy's coordinates first, uh -huh. that's the second coordinate. Okay. So you, by telling me one first, okay. you made this guy point right. two. I got you. I see what you're okay? saying. So I have to use him because these have ones, don't they? Yes, so then I'm going to use my x, which is 4, and then my y, which is negative 3. Okay. Now, I do have a double sign, but it's over here. So I'm going to fix my double sign before I distribute. I do not like to ever distribute with double signs. So I'm going to turn that to a minus. Now I'll distribute. So we get negative 2 fifths x, oh, negative times a negative, positive 8 fifths. And you could type it in your calculator, negative 2 fifths times negative 4. It'll tell you it's positive 8 fifths mm -hmm. minus 3. And then if you're fantastic at fractions, you could do this in your head. But if you're not great at, fa at, um, at fractions, then you might have to do that in the calculator. I don't even know if that's right. I just guessed. So let's see. 8 over 5 and then minus 3. Yes, negative 7 fifths. Okay. That was good. So you write negative good. seven fifths. Because you just made that three over one. Uh, yeah, and then I turned it into fifteen over five. five. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. And then five. negative that seven plus fifteen is five. Five. Okay. eight. Yeah. So we did this. I did this in my head. I did eight fifths yeah. minus three over one. Then I did eight fifths minus fifteen over five. Is it fifteen divided by five three? Yep. Right. Yeah. And then those, when you combine them, you get negative seven. So like I said, if you're great at fractions, you do it. If not, use a calculator. <laughs> okay. Okay, now they didn't tell me which way they wanted me the an to give them the answer. So then this is fine. They didn't say put it in AX plus BY plus equal to C. They didn't tell me to put it in Y equals MX plus B form. They didn't tell me what form they wanted. So I like to get rid of the parentheses and get rid of like things, But after you do that, you're done. 27 is different. Everything we've done so far has been diagonal lines. And that's more common than anything else, is the diagonal lines. But every now and then you get 
at a vertical line or a horizontal line, right? And so we have to know how to write the equations of those as well. And it really comes back to just memorizing those formulas or I think I wrote them on here. So for the horizontal line, it says on the sheet, the equation is y equals y1. And for the vertical line, it says the equation is x equals x1. And don't I have those coordinates? The x1 and the y1? Yep, you got the mm -hmm. x1 and the y1. So what is the y coordinate for this problem? Six. Six. So this is the horizontal line. Okay. And what is the x coordinate? Negative two. Negative two. So this is the equation of the vertical line. There's not really a whole lot to do, okay? That's the equation? Mm-hmm. So basically, if I had this point here, um, one, two, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you're gonna be right. Here's the dot, right? Yeah. If I draw the line y equals six, that's this line. Yeah, straight across. Mm-hmm. This is the equation for that line. If I draw a vertical line through this dot, it looks like that. That's, that's the equation of that line. So you don't. So when you're drawing that 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 zero or that pair that horizontal line, mm -hmm. you're, you don't need two points to make that line. No, because the y is always going to be six, always, no matter what. You could come up with another point. Just make sure the y value is six. The x value could be anything. I could have picked zero and six. I could have picked ten and six. I could have picked negative one hundred and six. It don't matter. The y is always going to be six. And for a vertical line, the x is always going to be negative two. So you don't need those when it comes to the vertical and horizontals. Those are the only ones that you don't use a formula, especially this one, because that has an undefined slope, right? Can you really, if you were to use this formula, could you multiply by something that's undefined? No. It's gonna turn everything undefined, yeah, it's right? Be, yeah. <laughs> so you can't use that formula for a vertical line at all. So those are like the little curveballs. But you do have it on the paper, it says, and it says it there too, use to write the equation of a horizontal line, use to write the equation of a vertical line. It literally says that on the paper and it tells you what the equation will look like. Okay, so pay special attention if they use those words, vertical line, horizontal line, because those are the only ones that you don't use that formula that we've been using this whole time. So that formula that you gave us for the point slope, slope form, mm -hmm. we can basically just use that for everything for else. Everything. So we don't need uh -huh. that y minus y1 and all of that. We can just use that y equals m. The one at the bottom. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. It's the same thing. It's just a different form yeah, of it. Yeah. Form. It's just Okay, so now this one says, consider the line y equals two-fifths x. What is the slope of a line perpendicular to this one? And what is the slope of a line parallel to this one? Well, the first thing you need to know is some information before you can answer that question. So the first thing we need to know is that when they say parallel, parallel lines have the same slope. Oh, I'm going to mess it up. You know I got a 99 on my Algebra 2 final exam in high school because I spelled parallel with two R's. <laughs> so parallel lines have, and I told the teacher, but you knew what word I was talking about. And she's like, yeah, but vocabulary is important. I'm like, okay, fine, lesson learned. <laughs> yeah. Parallel lines have the same slope. So parallel, same slope. Okay, perpendiculars are a little bit weird. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals of one another. 
So this one's different. Perpendicular is opposite reciprocals. So there's two changes you're gonna make. Opposite means the different sign. Okay, so if yours is positive, the perpendicular one will be negative. Okay. Or vice versa. If yours is negative, the perpendicular one will be positive. Okay, so it does have to have opposite sign. But it also needs to be the reciprocal, which means you're going to flip that fraction. And if there is no fraction, you're going to have to make one and then flip it. So if that, so I'm just going off what you said. So if that was like a three, like y equals three x, you would just make that three over one? Yes. And then you would flip it. And then you would flip it, make mm -hmm. it one third. Right, okay. Right. So then let's see here. So it says, what is the slope of a line perpendicular to this line? And then what is the slope parallel to this line? So this is just notation. You don't have to write it because Alex is not going to ask you for it. But this means perpendicular. And then this one means parallel. And the reason why I write that is because later when you're given like these big questions, you need to remember which one's which. Okay. If you don't want to use the symbols, you could do M perp right and then m para it doesn't matter just have some kind of indicator that they're which one you're talking about okay now i'm going to do this one what is the slope of our problem the slope of the line we were given two fifths two, two, fifths. Over, five. two, two fifths. over five yes, so if i want a parallel slope it's supposed to be the same as that slope so what would the parallel slope be same thing, two over five. The other one's the harder one, right? The perpendicular one. That's the one where I have to do the opposite reciprocal. So pretty much the parallel lines already given. Give it. it is. Mm -hmm. okay. So that perpendicular, you would make that five over two, but it would be a negative five over two? Negative five over two. Yep. Opposite sign and flipped. Mm -hmm. I got a suggestion that, mm -hmm. that you, you know, you might, can y'all change the language? To make it more I cannot. Easier. The only thing I could do is if I wrote my own book and then made Alex tie my book I'm to this about stuff. I'm talking like all the instructors here. Mm -hmm. Can y'all like generalize the language? Which I think because that would help. You know, older people like me, like they're fresh out. Mm -hmm. So somebody that hasn't been in a while, it would right? Because it, it makes sense when you say that. They are all. They all say that. The books say that word. Uh, those phrases. Uh, okay. So I'm not doing anything special by saying that. But putting it in layman's terms, because yeah. that I do do yeah. sometimes. Right. That, the books are not going to do. Yeah. Okay. They just don't. Right. That is, to me, that's the instructor's job to put it in a way that they can, your students can <laughs> explain it. But Because <laughs> the books are very general. They're for yeah. everyone. Okay. So, and some teachers are very stickler. They don't like to teach in layman's terms because they're very, like my teacher that got mad at me for misspelling parallel. <laughs> they're very much like you need to know it this way because that's how all the books are going to be written so you need to learn how to understand that book but one day once I get that doctor in front of my name <laughs> I'll start writing a book okay so this one is very similar notice it's asking me still slope of the perpendicular line slope of the parallel line the only problem is here is that I cannot tell you what the slope is because of the way they wrote the equation they wrote the equation in standard form right isn't this standard form ax plus by equal to c that is not the form that tells me what the slope is you need to put that in a y equals mx. Correct. Okay. And in order to make it look like y equals mx plus b, notice the y has to be all, all by, by itself, itself. Which is why in a previous module they were making you solve for this variable, solve for that variable, solve for this variable, right? Yeah. Because they want to addition you for that because it's going to come in handy in this section. So first thing I want to do is get the term with the y by itself. Subtract Move the x over. Subtract not 4, but okay. this whole six term, the 6x. So I'm going to minus 6x six on this side, minus 6x on that side. So it'll go away from the left, and I will have um, 4y 
positive 4y, right? Because it's, yep, positive. it's positive. But I do want the x's in the front and then the constant. So I'm going to put that negative, negative 6x, 6x in the front and then minus 3. Then minus three. Okay. But now I still need to get y completely by itself. So divide by 4 and then go ahead and divide everybody by 4. And if I reduce this, that becomes negative 3 halves. And this cannot be reduced. It stays negative 3 fourths. And if you're not sure, just type the fractions in the calculator. Hit enter. If it makes it look different, that's because it could reduce. If it makes it look exactly the same, it couldn't reduce. Okay? But now I can tell you what my slope is. What is my slope? Negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 over 2. So what is a perpendicular slope then? 2 over 3. Uh-huh. And positive or negative? That should be positive. Correct. Because it was negative. It has to be different. Mm -hmm. And what's a parallel slope? Same slope. Right. Same as the original. Good. It's just this one, they made us work a little bit, right? Because it wasn't in the right form. <laughs> okay. More junk with this parallel perpendicular oh, stuff. We're getting to the good one. The good one is the next one. What's that one you just had with the lines? And the, yeah. This one. We're going to do this one next. This one's 30. So they give us three lines. Yes. This and then those other ones with the all the gray boxes and everything. That one. Mm -hmm. Is that 4x plus? X and then you're plus even going to get, plus um, yes, that. It's like a whole packet, yeah. Is that 4x minus 6? And now, um, four, negative 4x four. Four minus, minus 6. six. Okay. And then 4x plus 5. Okay. And then the bottom one's in a different form. 12x plus 3y equals 6. Um, yeah, you get this, you get that. And then I'm even going to write on the board the steps to solving an equation, the ones I went over in the lecture video. Like first you get rid of the fractions and get rid of the parentheses oh. and all of that, right? I'm gonna put those on the on the board too. So you have all those resources. Okay, so Basically, what I need to do is I need to take, figure out what all the m's are. And then, once we know what all the m's are, we can decide whether they are the same, parallel, right? Whether they're perpendicular, opposite reciprocals of one another, or if that description doesn't apply, okay? And the way you're going to see the um, answer is going to be like a little chart. So, they're going to have a little chart here, and they're going to say, like, line one and line two and then line two and line three and then line one and line three and then it's basically gonna have a circle for parallel and then one for perpendicular I'm lazy, I'm just gonna write perp. And then one for neither, right? And you're just gonna click on which ones apply, okay? Just FYI, you're only gonna click one option for each pairing, okay? You, it can't be parallel and perpendicular, right? And if and it can definitely can't be neither and then one of those at the same time, right? Because that's contradicting yourself, okay? So you just need to figure out what the slopes are. So for the first one, it's easy to figure out what the slope is. What is the slope of the first line? Four. Almost. Four x. Nope. Negative four. Negative four. four. Okay, okay. What is the slope of the second line? Positive four. Positive four. The third one is just like the previous problem. It is not ready to figure out what the slope is. We have to get the y by itself before we can figure that out. So move to 12x. Mm -hmm. 12x. So then we get... 3y equals negative 12x and a positive 6. And then we still got to divide by 3. Mm -hmm. So this becomes y equals negative 4x plus 2. 
So now what is the slope? Negative four. Negative four. And to keep these straight, this was for line one, this was for line two, and this was for line three, right? So I just put little subscripts to help me keep them straight. Now, look at line one and line two. This one and this one. Are they the same? No. 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 Are they perpendicular? Yes. yes. No, they are not. What? It equals... I they're not flipped. Oh, they're not. Okay. No. What? Okay. Four... It doesn't matter which one you look at, but if you look at negative four, right? Yeah. If you write that as a fraction, it's negative four over oh, one. Right. If I flip that, it becomes one over four. Yeah, okay? okay. And then if it were perpendicular, I would have to turn oh, to a positive. Right. Exactly. And I don't have one fourth there. Okay. So these are not perpendicular, which means the only option is here for line one and line two. Now for line two and line three, look at two and three. Are those the same, parallel? No. Are they perpendicular? No, you would need a one fourth, right? Yeah, In order for one, one of them to be right. perpendicular. So then these are also neither. Now look at line one and line three. So line one and line three slope. Negative are those parallel? Those are parallel. Those are parallel. And then you don't need to go through the others because it's only going to be one of the options. Okay. okay. But you do have to be careful with that perpendicular junk. Make sure you're flipping it over. So all that parallel perpendicular line was really just to build you up for this problem because this is the big one. Okay. So it says for us to consider this line negative two sevenths x minus three and it wants us to find two different equations find the equation of the line that's parallel and passes through this point and then find an equation that is perpendicular to that line and passes through that same point so remember find an equation means you automatically should be thinking to use this formula So immediately we need to use that formula. Now we have the point, right? We have the x1 and the y1, the negative 7 and the negative 2. We just need to figure out what slope we have to use. Since this is supposed to be parallel to this line, what is this guy's slope? Does it got to be parallel? What is his slope? Negative 2 over 7. Negative 2 over 7. Right. And since I'm doing one that's parallel, what is my slope going to be? Negative 2 over 7. The same. Negative 2 over 7. And then what is the x coordinate? Uh, negative 7. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have negative 7. And then what is the y coordinate? Negative 2. Negative 2. Now I do have double signs so twice, right? Plus, uh, well, the first one's going to be plus x plus 7. Mm -hmm. and, then minus two. and then minus two and then I can start doing my distributing and all that and that would be negative two and negative two and then this eventually becomes negative four I just multiplied these two together. I got this, and then I multiplied these two together. So I go from the left to the right, from the left to the right. So you can't distribute from the right? To it doesn't matter. If you go this two. way. Oh, no, from negative two to, to uh, the negative two. This one? Yeah. No. This is only multiplied by these guys. Okay. That's when they're in parentheses like that, that's what you need to multiply it by. So your multiplying stops when those parentheses stop. So you should never be taking this guy and multiplying it all the way over there. Oh no, like, like, negative, like the opposite way is so from negative 2 distributed to parentheses uh, x. Oh no, this is a minus 2, not a 2 that's being multiplied by that. Oh. oh. If it were like this, oh shoot, I can't write. Um, like that, then that's multiplication. Oh, okay. And then yes, you would do this. Okay.
Okay, so B is the same thing, write an equation. So I'm gonna write that same formula. And then again, we just have to be careful. What is the slope that I am going to use? This one says it should be perpendicular. So it's going to be positive two sevens. No. Is it, is it, is it the full and fifth fraction? Uh-huh. So, so it seven. is going to be positive, but oh, what fraction? Seven over two. Seven over two. You said two sevens. You have to flip it, right? Uh, yeah. So not two sevens, seven. but okay, seven halves, seven, right? Seven halves. Yeah. Right. Okay. First so positive yeah. seven halves. Positive. And then the x coordinate is still negative seven. Y coordinate is still negative two. Okay. So let me clear out those double negatives first. And then distribute. And once I combine the two in, I'm done. So you can use your calculator, right? Multiply that times x is just seven halves x. Seven halves times seven, calculator will tell you it's 49 over two. I do not multiply that because the parentheses stop, right? right? So it comes there. And then if you type this in your calculator, 49 over two positive minus two, it'll tell you it's positive 45 over two. This problem is exactly the same as 30. The only problem, the only difference is that there, the slopes were easy to identify. Here, I have to work for it. So it's the same kind of thing. They wanna know if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So the answer is gonna be that same chart type, right? So is this where you use the Y, two minus Y? Uh-huh, we're gonna have to do it a bunch of times, yeah, yep. So it's the same thing, it's line one and line two, line two and line three, and then line one and line three. And so parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So I'm going to call all the ones that are in the front point one and all the ones that are after and my point twos. Okay. So I'm going to do M1. So this is a slope for the first line, which means I'm using these two points. So I'm going to use the second y minus the first y, second x minus the first x. Mm-hmm. And you don't need to reduce it. The only thing you'll do is put a negative in the front in your calculator, but that's it. So for the second one, I'm going to use the 0 and negative 1 and the negative 5 and the negative 8. So second y value, first y value. Second x, first x. Negative seven. Over negative five, which is actually a positive seven fifths. Then lastly, we're gonna do for the third line. So we're using these points. Negative two minus eight. Minus negative two. So we get negative 10 over four which is negative five over two. So then let's compare. One and two. Are these guys um, parallel? No. They're not the same. No. Are they perpendicular? No. 
No, they're opposite signs, but definitely not reciprocals because you got a two here and a seven there, right? So then they have to be neither. If that had been a two, right, then they would have been perpendicular, right? So then lines two and three, these two guys, are those parallel? Not the same. Are they perpendicular? So then they have to be neither. Then lines one and three, which are these guys, are they parallel? Yes, ma'am. They're exactly the same. Sign and all, right? So that's it. You just have to work for your slopes on this one before you compare. Okay, I think we got a word problem, and then that'll be the end of this video. So, let's see. Oh, one thing you need to know. This phrase right here, average rate of change, that is like the word problem version of the word slope. And if you notice in your paper, it says for this formula, right, the slope formula, it says use to find the slope between two points. It also says use to find the average rate of change because that's what slope is. It's the average rate of change. It's the change in this per the change in that, okay? So let's try to do this problem. It says find the average rate of change for the height from zero seconds to 40, 4.6 seconds. So let's read a little context here. Ryan launches a rocket straight up into the air. The table below gives the height, which is H of T, the height of the rocket in meters at a few times T during its flight. And the T is in seconds, okay? So then what we need to do is we need to find the coordinates that go with zero seconds and 4.6 seconds. So what I'm gonna do is for Zero seconds, zero seconds is the x, what is the y or the height? So this is the time, what is the height? 92. No, for zero seconds, zero. the height is oh, zero. Sorry, zero. Okay, okay. Then for the second point, the time is what? 2.3. Nope, it says 2. 4.6. 4.6 seconds. Oh. I have to use that. That's what it's telling me yeah, to so use. use but what is the height that goes along with that point? 138. 138. So I have to use these two points because those are the ones that they told me to use, right? They kind of just glossed over 2.3, but it's okay. Okay? They just want me to look at 0 and 4.6. What happened between 0 and 4.6? So when I do my calculations for M, Remember, it's y2 over y1 over x2 minus x1. So let me see. I get 138 divided by 4.6, which is 30. Now, most of the time, Alex will give you the units. Sometimes, excuse me, they make you choose the units from a drop-down arrow. It just depends on the problem. But here, 138 and 0, those were the heights, weren't they? Yep. And what measurement was the height in? Meters. Meters. And then the 4.6 and the 0 down here were in what kind of measurement? Seconds. Seconds. So you know I have meters over seconds? Uh-huh. So you have meters per second. second. And that's what this number represents. Or you might just see MPS, yeah, it's the same thing. So, oh yeah. So the other one problem is nothing different. It's the same thing. It's just I have two different points to start with, right? So now I'm starting with 9.2 seconds. And what is the height that goes with 9.2 seconds? 23. 23. And then it says I also have to use 11.5 seconds. And what's the height that goes with that? Zero. Zero. And you're doing the exact same thing. So second y value minus the first. And then the second x value minus the first. 
So you get negative 23 over 2.3. Negative 23 divided by 2.3 is negative 10. So and that would be MPS as for that mm -hmm, too, right? MPS for this one too. So this one's actually decreasing, right? So many meters per second. And that's another thing we'll get into later as well. When the slope is positive, it means it's increasing that much. Yeah. And when the slope is negative, it means it's decreasing that fast, okay? Okay, I think, yeah, we're done with this one. So let me stop the video.